Achieving human-level speed and performance on real-world tasks is a North Star for the robotics research community. And here's a brand new robot out of Google DeepMind that takes a step towards this goal of human-level performance. In this case, for competitive table tennis. This is the first learned robot agent that reaches amateur human-level performance in table tennis. So as we talk about this, one of the interesting things to pay attention to is something that's referred to as sim to real. So as we train robots in simulation, the trick is once they've learned how to do something inside the simulation, inside the digital world, how do you take that out and you apply it to real world tasks in our real physical universe? That leap is sometimes referred to as the sim to real gap. And a lot of the latest research out of Google DeepMind as well as NVIDIA is showing that they're rapidly able to close that gap and figure out ways to improve simulation training and merge the simulations with the real world performance. As you'll see in a second, one of the really hard things about doing this was the fact that we don't really have data on these robots playing against human opponents playing table tennis, right? So there's nothing, it's not like we have a million hours of footage of a first person view from a robot, for example, as a human opponent is, is serving to it or returning the ball. There's just not an abundance of data there. So let's take a look at how they got around that problem, how they make the, how they made the robot be able to adapt in real time to unseen opponents. Because while in the early days it was training against the researchers that, you know, may or may not have been the greatest table tennis players of all time, the system, this AI was able to generalize to unseen opponents, to other people that it's never seen before, of different levels of skills, different ways of striking at the ball. This was an interesting experiment because achieving human level performance in terms of accuracy, speed, and adaptability, it remains a challenge for robotics. And for humans, table tennis requires years of training if you wanted to master it. And this is due to its complex, low level skills skills and strategic gameplay. And one thing they kept in mind wasn't just to have the robot beat the human, right? To hit the ball as hard as possible and score a point. That was not the goal of this training system. They wanted to have this competitive play at a human level against a robot agent that humans actually enjoyed playing with. So on GitHub, Google DeepMind posts this software called MujoCo. It's a multi joint dynamics with contact, a general purpose physics simulator. So if you need something that simulates the physics of movements, heading, contact, etc., this is available to use. This is a free and open source physics engine. And this is how the AI agent gets trained using that physics simulator, Mujico. And the goal is to learn some basics, aka what they refer to as low-level skills. As they say here, we train a skill library of low-level controllers. So think of these as basically skills. We have forehand serve, backhand serve, forehand rally, backhand rally, etc. And interestingly, these uh, adapters, top spin adapter, under spin adapter. So I'm not a table tennis master by any stretch of the imagination, but so I've played a game or two, but basically my understanding is like you are able to put things like top spin and under spin on the ball as you're serving, which changes its behaviors when you hit it back. So the robot would need to take into account if the opponent puts some vicious spin on the ball. I feel like when you play, you acquire that skill intuitively, but I'm, I'm not sure if I can really even describe what you're doing. Maybe it's just how you're angling the paddle. But anyway, this robot seemed to have figured it out. And what's interesting is that these policies transfer zero shot to the physical world. So once it's trained in the simulation, it's able to play in the real world. So here's a sample training run in the simulation here on the left and it transfers zero shot, meaning we don't have to help it translate. It just kind of figures it out. This knowledge, this skill just transfer into the real world. Now, what's interesting is they didn't have too much data of how robots play ping pong in simulation. So how they begin to accumulate that data is kind of interesting. Here's a video from about one year ago from this team showing how they just started to get the snowball rolling. Our goal is to leverage the power of simulation to train robotic policies that are proficient at interacting with humans upon deployment. We focus on the task of cooperative table tennis, where the objective for the robot is to play cooperatively with a human player for as long as possible. The main challenge is how to gather examples of a human interacting with a physical robot in order to model human behavior in simulation without already having a robot that is able to interact with a human. Iterative sim to real, which we call IS2R for brevity, attempts to address this. IS2R bootstraps from a simple model of human behavior and alternates between training and simulation and deploying in the real world. We start by collecting an initial data set of human behavior without the robot doing anything. This initial data set is used to create an initial human behavior model which in turn is used to train a policy in simulation. 
When the policy has converged, we transfer the weights to the physical robot. Initially, the policy can successfully return balls, but struggles to sustain cooperative play. Then, the policy is fine-tuned on the real robot for a number of parameter updates. All human interaction data from fine-tuning is added to the existing human interaction data. The human behavior model is updated, and the policy weights are transferred back to simulation, where training continues using the latest behavior model and the latest fine-tuned model from the real world. Then the policy weights are transferred back to the robot for another iteration of fine-tuning, and the process is repeated until the human behavior model converges. Interesting. Here they have a section talking about the spin classifier. The spin classifier is a binary classifier that determines the incoming serve was hit by the humans as a top spin or underspin. So basically, after it sees the human hit the ball, classifies it as either top spin or underspin. Based on this, it selects the appropriate LLC. What is an LLC? Is it a limited liability company? No, it's actually a low-level controller. So it's basically the basic skills that it's that it has learned. And the other sort of half of it is the high-level controller, the HLC. And this one's responsible for making strategic decisions like where to return the ball, how fast to hit, how much risk to take. Interestingly, in the simulation, they simulated the paddle as two orthogonal passive joints representing a spring and damper system. So since the paddle has that rubber surface, it has a certain certain feel, certain texture. So they had to find something that is equivalent in the simulation that kind of has the same properties. So things like softness, slip, and friction, they were determined empirically. So they just basically copied what was in nature, while things like joint stiffness, dampening, and armature were established through parameter sweeps, optimizing for a sim to real transfer. A parameter sweep basically means using a wide range of values, right, from like for joint stiffness from very stiff to not very stiff, right? So kind of like a whole range. Then simply selecting the best one that optimizes for sim to real transfer. And as people played with this robot to determine how good it was, and they were asked to rate how, you know, how fun it was. So players were asked to what degree do these words describe your experience with playing table tennis with this robot? And basically one was a strongly disagree, five is strongly agree. So the higher, the more they agree. And if we look at sort of all skill levels, right, because they also broke it down by beginner, intermediate, advanced, and advanced plus. But at all skill levels, it looks like most people rated it as fun. It was fun to play against this robot. It was engaging. They rated it as a 3.5 in terms of how challenging it was, a 3 in terms of how easy it was, so neither not too easy or too hard, perhaps, and low in terms of frustration and annoyance. So not very frustrating and not very annoying. In other words, people enjoyed it. When asked if they would be playing with this robot again, they said yes, they would definitely do so. Interestingly, when they broke down into games where robot won versus games where robot lost, it seems like how fun and engaging it is and how low on the annoyance and the frustration stay about the same. The only thing that changes is if people would describe it as easy or challenging. So it seems like Google DeepMind is fully committed to creating an AI to beat humans at everything, at Dota, StarCraft, chess, Go, and now table tennis. Some might find this very disheartening, but I got to say, I'm pretty impressed. And also, I think if you're trying to improve your game, a robot can be designed specifically to improve your game, to increase sort of the density of practice, to reduce how much time you, you spend chasing the ball. You want to work on a certain specific situation that you're weak at. It can just constantly place the ball in that location. But more importantly than just what this specific ten table tennis robot can do, I think is this idea that training robots in simulation simulations and transferring those skills, those learnings, those abilities to the real world, but that process is getting better and better. More and more people are successfully doing it, publishing their results, sharing the problems and how they overcome them, sharing the best practices. And with Google DeepMind, for example, open sourcing a lot of their work. In this case, they have the Mujoko, the advanced physics engine that they've open sourced. So a lot of people can try implementing their own robot learning strategies and practicing on teaching robots to do stuff from the comfort of their own home. I hope you enjoyed that little break it. I know it's a little bit different from our regular content, but this upcoming week, I think is going to be insane with the new rumored model releases. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And I thought this was a kind of a fun and interesting break. If you enjoyed it, please hit thumbs up. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.